click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have got to know about a brief knowledge about how can we prepare the alkali using various uh, methods. And uh, based on that only we are going to talk about a separate lecture that is what we are going to talk about that is halogenation process or we could talk about that is uh, the halogenation of alkene. So how that could be done and what are the various uh, that is uh, involvement in this kind of process so that we could obtain a desired alkali. Let us talk about this one. So talking about the halogenation of alkene and this is basically the first uh, that is preparation of uh, alkali that is we are going to talk about and there are various lectures that we are going to talk about later on also. So talking about the halogenation, so what is halogenation, let us talk about that. So therefore we could know that as the halogenation means the replacement of one or more hydrogen atoms of an alkene by the corresponding number of halogen atoms using halogens that is that could be Cl2, Br2, I2 is called as halogenation of alkene. So therefore this is a kind of replacement reaction that I am going to talk about and let us understand this that how can we uh, do this kind of reaction and uh, basically we have discussed about here that is a uh, Cl2, Br2 and I2 that means we are going to talk about this chlorination, bromination and iodination but there are different criteria for this we could get a particular uh, alkyl hand that could be like uh, alkyl chloride, alkyl bromide and alkyl iodide so these are the two different methods uh, and different criteria that we are going to talk about but let us understand that what is the general reaction of halogenation of alkene and then on we could uh, later talk about that is what is chlorination, bromination and iodination so let us talk about the general reaction so this is the alkene and that is what we are going to react with that of the halogen uh, gas and that is what uh, I am representing that halogen with that is X2. So what happens as I said earlier also that is this is a kind of replacement reaction. So that is the reason that uh, suppose if that alkene consists of uh, one replaceable uh, hydrogen atom and uh, that is what we have suppose here. So now the thing that we could obtain over here is one of the hydrogen will take away that is uh, one of uh, the X or one of the halogen atom uh, from X2 and that is what we could get that is HX as a byproduct and we have the product that we could get is basically because the H has been removed and one X also has been removed from here so therefore Rx this is what we could get and this is what we know it as alkyl halide so this is the general reaction or the general preparation uh, or we could say that uh, the halogenation process in which basically one uh, alkane is been converted into an alkyl halide by removing uh, one of uh, the hydrogen atom from the alkene and uh, by using the X2 or by using the halogen uh, molecule and that's it. So this is the general reaction that we have talked about and now let us move on to the next one that is what is chlorination. So this is chlorination that we are going to talk about. So chlorination is nothing but uh, it is a kind of halogenation in basically uh, in which one or more hydrogen atom of the alkene are been replaced by the respective number of that is uh, chlorine atom. So this is what chlorination reaction is. So let me discuss about it with the help of an example. So let us talk about the general reaction also. So suppose if we have a particular alkene that is RH, we usually represent in this way. And if we are reacting with that of Cl2, so this is what I have mentioned over here. But the thing is, the process will only be uh, happen it will only conclude if we have basically a particular kind of condition and that particular kind of condition is nothing but that is uv light or sunlight we could say so this uv light has a particular energy so that it could break the bond between that is chlorine and chlorine atom and that's the reason that we could find that is uh, here also the bond will try to break and in this case we see this hcl will be removed as a byproduct and the HCl is been removed over here and that's the reason that the only thing that has been left with us is basically this R and this Cl so therefore this is basically we could call it as alkyl chloride so this is what we have and this is how we can prepare that is an alkyl chloride so let me talk about uh, a few information regarding this also that is uh, since we are using UV light and uh, we are breaking the bond uh, between the chlorine atom and that of the other chlorine atom. So this kind of reaction that it takes place with the help of the radical formation. 
So whenever this Cl, that is uh, the bond between chlorine atom and the chlorine atom is being broken, so there is a formation of radical that is what we could get. And as we know that these radicals are basically very much reactive and that's the reason that uh, they won't stop here until we get a alkyl halide or uh, we get basically a mono HD. But this will go on continuing unless all the hydrogen atoms of that particular alkane is being replaced by their respective uh, that is uh, uh, chlorine atom. And this is what uh, the chlorination process is and it doesn't stop. So that's the reason suppose if I am taking if I am considering an example like CH3 H or basically I could write it as CH4 also and suppose if I am reacting it with that of uh, the chlorine molecule or that is Cl2 over here and using a particular condition that is sunlight or UV radiation. So one of the H will take away this Cl so as to form HCl so this is what we could get and the only thing that has been remaining with us is basically CH3Cl so I could write that as a product. But since I have mentioned over here that is, uh, it is a process where the radical formation takes place and that's the reason that uh, uh, it is, uh, it will not stop up till here, it will go on until all the hydrogens are being replaced by the uh, chlorine atom and that's the reason that uh, again this CH3Cl that has been produced during the first step is now again treated with that of uh, the Cl2 so as to form that is CH2Cl2 along with that of HCl and this will go on. So until all the hydrogen atoms are been replaced. So therefore this is the one that won't stop and uh, that is what the chlorination means. So for example, if you have to uh, obtain a particular alkyl halide right, that should consist of only one halogen atom in the uh, that is attached to an alkyl group. So that is the reason that so as to obtain a mono halogen derivative, uh, we can't uh, prefer the chlorination and using, using this uh, condition. So different kind of methods are to be used. So this is was uh, this was an example where we have discussed about uh, that is uh, the chlorination and now let us talk about the next process that is bromination. So now we are going to talk about bromination and uh, so this is very much similar that what we have did in our uh, that is uh, in the definition of the halogenation. The only difference is we are uh, that is replacing instead of chlorine we are will replace uh, it with that of the bromine atom and the bromine atom can be obtained from the bromine molecule itself. So therefore this is a kind of uh, the replacement reaction where the number of uh, one or more number of hydrogen atoms of an alkene are being replaced by that is the bromine atom and using that is bromine molecule. So for that example suppose if I am uh, giving the general reaction for that one. So suppose if we have uh, alkane and that is what we represent with RH. So this alkane is been treated with that is of a bromine molecule and that is what I am mentioning over here as this one but as I have discussed earlier also that is there are different conditions from which we can uh, make an halogenation process that is for chlorination that has a different condition that is what we have to use that is we have to use UV light or UV source so that uh, that kind of energy would be able to break the bond uh, between the chlorine and chlorine and that is the reason that the radical formation can, can take space and the uh, desired product that, that could be obtained. But talking about bromination uh, process in this case basically we are using different condition and we are using basically anhydrous AlBr3. So if you use that uh, substance that is AlBr3 then only the halo, uh, then only the bromination will take space or the halogenation will take space in such a manner that this H will take away this Br molecule, this Br atom so as to form a smaller molecule as HBr as a byproduct. Meanwhile the product that has been obtained over here is basically RBr which is called to be alkyl bromide. So this is what uh, I wanted to mention about. So now again, uh, similar to that of the chlorination, even this reaction doesn't stop over here, and uh, that's the reason. In this case, basically, we have uh, we have got a, a uh, molecule where only one bromine atom is present, and that has been attached to the alkyl group. But using uh, this kind of process, even the multiple bromine atoms that could be uh, able to replace the hydrogen atoms, and that could be attached with that of the uh, alkane, and that is what uh, the reaction doesn't stop. For example, if I would talk about that is, if we have that is C2H5 or I could write it as CH3, CH2 and here suppose it is H, making this to be called as ethane that we know and if I treat it with that is bromine molecule that is Br over here by using anhydrous AlBr3 that is the different condition that we are talking about and uh, it is very simple to understand that is this H and this Br that would be removed as a byproduct 
as HBR. And the only thing that will be left is basically C to H5. Yeah. Obviously, we call it as ethyl bromide, or according to the IPC name, the name of this one would be bromoethyl. So this is how we can prepare uh, that is an alkaline using uh, bromination process. So now let us talk about the last one that is iodination process. So this is the process where we replace the uh, one or more hydrogen atoms of uh, the alkane with the uh, respective number of the uh, iodine atoms using uh, iodine molecule. But this uh, reaction is completely different from that of the other one. Usually we have got to know that is uh, the chlorination and the bromination they were giving irreversible reaction using uh, or uh, having a particular condition using like different sources like UV light or uh, other one that is anhydrous ALBR thing. But in iodination we are using something different and uh, what is that? Let me talk about this one. Suppose if we have that is uh, an alkane and if we are treating it with I2 that is iodine molecule. So this will give us that is an uh, alkyne iodide but the thing is this reaction is actually reversible yes so this kind of reaction doesn't happen uh, and it doesn't gives us completely the formation of the alkyl iodide when we are not using a suitable condition for this thing and uh, that's the reason that uh, because of uh, we know that this iodine has a bigger atomic size compared to that of the other halogen atoms like that of fluorine, chlorine and chromine. So that's the reason the reaction it doesn't take place uh, with that much feasible. So that's the reason we have to provide a particular condition for that and we have to use particular reagent and those reagents that we have to use is basically an oxidizing reagent. So that is the reason and the substance that has been used uh, or the condition that has been applied over here so as to obtain uh, a basically a uh, complete alkyl halide is basically by using of an oxidizing agent. And those oxidizing agents are that could be that is the uh, uh, HiO3, that could be HgO, etc. So that is the reason. For example, if I am uh, giving uh, such an example where we are using uh, the oxidizing agents such as HgO or mercury oxide. So let us see at uh, what kind of product that we could get. Suppose if we have ethane, so that is that could be represented by that is CH3, single bond CH3. And now that is we are going to use it that is I2, so as to uh, obtain an alkyl iodide and or we could say that ethyl iodide but this reaction does, will give a basically reversible reaction so that's the reason we have to use a particular oxidizing agent and in that case basically the oxidizing agent is what we are using is HgO so now the reversible reaction can be converted to irreversible reaction where we could obtain that is C2H5I along with that of that is HgI2 and the other product is H2. But the reaction is not balanced, so therefore we have to balance the reaction. So that's the reason that uh, we are multiplying this by 2. Even I2 will be multiplied by 2, and this even will multiply by 2. So this is the uh, thing that we have got over here. So this is all what we have got the product over here by using uh, or by converting the uh, ethane to ethyl iodide using iodine and uh, in oxidizing agent. So that's it. This is what I want to talk about. So this is the halogenation process that we have got to know about uh, the first preparation of the alkyl head, uh, the thing that we have did in the previous lecture. So that's it. This is what I want to talk about. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and you share this video with your friends. So don't forget to subscribe and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.